What parts are the most common to keep on your service vehicle as a service technician? What do you end up replacing the most during the summer, during the winter, spring, fall? Depending on which season will depend on what parts you're replacing the most. Today we're in the parts room. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I thought I'd do a video today and go over every part if I were an HVAC technician, what would I keep on my service vehicle so that I could be the most prepared and why? We're not, we're not only going to just go over parts today, we're going to go over the why, the why, the when. So I'm going to give you as much information as possible so that you can stock your service vehicle and have the parts that you need. And you're also going to know why and when. So that's going to be great as well. So if you're not an HVAC technician yet, but you're going to school and you're going to learn how to be an HVAC technician, I'm going to give you some really good knowledge right now. So take a moment, give me your time because I'm going to provide you with time. Okay. And that means I'm going to give you knowledge, which is going to lead to hopefully you being more financially stable. And that's going to give you time. So definitely before we start the video, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell thing. So you know what I'm doing in the future. If you want HVAC tech support, you want me to help you, you want my contact information, you know how to get it. You just hit the, uh, click the join button. It's right there at the bottom. You have to be signed in, but click the join button. Let me know in the comment section. I joined, I'll get you my email that'll lead to my contact for all my members that are supporting me. Thank you. If you need anything, you know, all you have to do is ask the question. You have my contact, you have my email, reach out to me. Let's go and get started with today's video. Let's talk about all the parts. So this is the parts room. We have motors, uh, we have capacitors, we have contactors, we have relays, we have disconnects. We have 125 amp disconnects, 60 amp disconnects. We have this section here, which is most of my heating parts, my gas valves, my sequencers, my limit switches. We're gonna go over all that, but I'm just giving you an overview really quickly. This is all the thermostats, of course the tape, the coil cleaner, the screws. We have different types of screws. We're gonna go over all that. And then we've got our breakers, our silicone, our staples, our conduit fittings. So we've got straight, we got uh, 90s, we got all of our copper, we have all of our gas fittings. So this is gas pipe fittings. We have our wire nuts. Uh, we've got uh, service ports. We have these saw blades. All right, now let's go over each one and let's talk about it in detail, okay? So during the summertime, what parts are you gonna run into the most that you're gonna have to replace? Well, number one is capacitors. Capacitors go out. Capacitors help the motors to run, whether it's a compressor or it's a fan motor. You want to know how to check a capacitor? You're going to check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. We have capacitors from 4 microfarad up to 5, 7.5, 10, 15, 20. This is 30 plus 5. We get into the dual capacitor. Dual capacitor means not only do you have a place for your common herm, your compressor hookup, but also your common and your fan. So this is your fans, capacitor, and your compressor in one. That's a dual capacitor. So capacitors is one of the number one most common parts that is going to have to be replaced, and it's during the summer. And not only do you have these capacitors, but you have these contactors. You have two, uh, single pole, double pole. We have um, three pole contactors. This is more your um, commercial, light commercial and commercial. This is your two pole contactor is more residential. So contactors, capacitors. Why do you have to replace contactor? Well, maybe it's got carbon buildup on the contacts and it's over time it builds up carbon and you can no longer clean it because it is just in terrible shape. You want a video on me changing a contactor. Also ants getting contactors and all kinds of, you know, different um, insects. And when that happens, of course, you can clean it out sometimes. Sometimes you got to replace it. Sometimes these contactors will fry because you have a uh, short. So capacitors contactors then we have relays we have different types of relays this is a type of relay you want to learn about relays then i have a video on that relays transformers and how to check them how they work this is a 9340 got a couple normally open and normally closed contacts and then a coil you want to learn about that you check out my playlist but those control fan motors and 
Then we've got sequencers. We're going to go over that. But this is summer parts mostly. Can be winter, but summer. This right here is a hard start kit. You want to learn about more about this and how to replace one. I got a video on that. But hard start kits is something you can add if a compressor is not starting to be able to help that compressor start again. Transformers. Transformers step down the voltage. You got 120, 240, 208, 24 volts. Transformers go bad, and they go bad summer or winter. All right, let's continue. We have uh, disconnects. This is a 60 amp disconnect, and this is something that has to be replaced summer or winter, doesn't matter. Got the parts you pull out there. That's something that has to be replaced, and sometimes the bars will rust out. Sometimes they'll be melted because of heat and a loose connection. That's something you have to have. This is an indoor disconnect here, and this is an outdoor disconnect. Know the difference. You got to know the difference. All right. All right, let's go over some more parts. First, before we go over some of the winter parts, I'm going to go over some more summer parts. Motors. All right. What's the difference in an open type motor and a closed type motor? This is a condenser fan motor. It's closed type. You can see there's no um, way for water to get in. This is going to be outside. You have the little drainage holes on the bottom. This is a condenser fan motor. It's an outdoor fan motor. This is an indoor fan motor. You want to know more about motors? I've got a video on that. HVAC tips for technicians. It's a playlist. Check it out. So this right here is an indoor motor. You have 230 volt, which goes on heat pumps, split or package. And then you've got 115 volt, which goes on the gas furnaces. And those are two different types of motors, but that's something you have to replace and you have to keep on your van. Definitely keep all three of those types of motors on your van. And if you want to learn more, again, check out my playlist. Brackets. You may want to keep motor brackets because sometimes you'll have a motor's bracket just break, okay? So you got to keep motors. You got to keep capacitors. You got to keep contactors. Ooh, I almost forgot. Condensate pumps. You might have to have a condensate pump. You got 115 volt condensate pumps. You've also got 230 volt condensate pumps. You may need to keep some drain tube on your van, 3 8 drain tube. This is what connects uh, to this condensate pump here. I'll show you that. See right there. So you may need to keep a condensate pump on your van. They either need to be cleaned or the motors burn up. All right, this is a condensate pump for a Samsung unit. Uh, well, for a mini split. This is a mini split condensate pump. And uh, it's made by Aspen Mini Orange 230, 115 volt. It's univolt, so it can be either or. But I've got a video on that, too. You should check that out. All right, let's go ahead and go to tape. You may need some duct tape, okay? You may need some chrome tape, okay? Or you may need some Pollock and Mastic. Pollock and Mastic, in my opinion, is the best. But different tapes, different uses, right? Let me go ahead and show you the Pollock and Mastic real quick here. I know I have some in my vehicle. I always keep it in my vehicle. This stuff is awesome, okay? This is the best for sealing duct right here. Why? Because it's really sticky. Be careful, it will cut you. Thermostat wire. You gotta keep thermostat wire. Sometimes you have a shortened thermostat wire and you gotta pull a whole new wire. Or sometimes you're just on a job and you're putting in a new unit and there is no thermostat wire, so you got to pull thermostat wire, right? Summer and winter, you got to keep thermostats. Thermostats I like. This T701 is great. You can see there is no emergency heat, so it's just single stage. It's heat, cool, and off, okay? So single heat and cool only stats. We keep T4 thermostats right here. See these T4 thermostats? We keep those, that's two heat, one cool heat pump, or one heat, one cool conventional. So it can be gas or heat pump. It's like we're getting a phone call. This is the T6 thermostat. I keep a T4 and I keep a T6 on my, on my vehicle, and that is because this one's two stage. So this is two stage heat and cool. T4 and T6, Honeywell stats, great thermostats for you to keep on your vehicle. All right. Now, thermostats may need some coil cleaner for the indoor. This is um, EVAP foam, no rinse, so that's good for the indoor. Uh, screws, let's go over screws real quick. Then we're gonna go over winter parts. This is quarter inch screws, most commonly used. Then you've got your bit tip. This right here is your uh, 5 16 bit tip. You can see that right there. And then uh, this right here is quarter inch head, okay? But two inch screws, okay? So you'll definitely need some of those, okay? 
So I wanted to show you that. You'll need to keep some copper fittings on your van, on your service vehicle. You also need some copper. This is 3 8 This is half inch. This is usually used for the liquid line, uh, 3 8 Then you've got your vapor line. This is your vapor line fittings. This is 3 quarter. And this is a coupling, okay? And then this right here is, of course, a 90. That's 3 quarter, usually used for upwards a three ton, anything over three ton, you're gonna be using seven eighths, okay? So three and a half ton, four ton, five ton, five ton, it could be inch and eight, but mostly it's usually seven eighths. This is a coupling, and that is a 90. All right, now, you'll definitely need wire nuts. We've got orange wire nuts, yellow wire nuts, and then red, and then blue. So as you get to the bigger wire, number six wire, you'll be using the red or the blue wire nuts, number 10 wire, you might be using the yellow or the red. And then of course, this right here is great for thermostat wiring and uh, maybe number 14 wire or something like that. So let's go to the winter part. Of course, you saw the conduit fittings, you saw the silicone, you need that, that's good. I'll show you that real quick. Then we're gonna go to the winter part real quick. Oh, here's another summer part, breakers. Okay, if a breaker's bad, if it keeps tripping, there's nothing wrong with the unit. It's probably the breaker. Take the breaker out. Then look at the back of the breaker here. See if this right here is corroded. There's any corrosion, rust. Silicone, you may need silicone. This is clear silicone. Also solder. You may need solder, okay? Because that's the only way you're gonna be able to braze is with solder. So 15% silver solder is great. This right here is a float switch. You may need to take this float switch with you because there may be a float switch that's bad. Somebody stepped on it, broke it. Here's conduit fittings. I'll show you conduit here in a minute. Winter parts. All right. Oh, we need to go over TXVs. Usually you don't carry TXVs with you. Usually you get them all on the serial number and you order if the metering device is bad. This is sequencers. Number one part that goes bad on trailer furnaces is a sequencer. Change it wire for wire unless all the wires are burned up then you may need to do some rewiring. But this is a double pole sequencer, okay? And this is a single sequencer. I mean, not double pole sequencer. These are double sequencers. There's two sequencers in here, right? And this right here is a single sequencer, okay? All right, limit switch. This is an adjustable limit switch. Uh, this is something that may go bad. Uh, looks like this is, goes from 175 to 215 degrees. Thermocouple, okay? This right here is something that has to be replaced on hanging heaters. And that brings us to pressure switches. Look at this. This is a pressure switch. This is a common part that fails during the winter a lot. So you may, you definitely need to keep some pressure switches, thermocouples, sequencers. All right, let's move on. Gas valves. You may need to keep a single stage gas valve on your service vehicle. This is another pressure switch. You see it's 0.18 water column. You may need to keep at least a negative 0 0.10, 0 0.20, 0 0.30. That's a good uh, place to start. Hot surface igniters and um, just igniters in general. See, there's igniters right there. Take a minute, look at those part numbers if you need to. Burners, you could carry a couple different types of burners, but usually if you can't clean them, you need to order a new set of burners. I think this is a pretty good start for you to understand that there's a lot of parts that you may need to carry. And we've went over quite a few today. Definitely want to carry some sequencers. Definitely want thermocouples, pressure switches, a uh, gas valve. Let's see. Let's go look at conduit. and Because I want you to be as fully prepared as possible. That was the parts room, by the way. This right here is the main area. Give me just a second here. May need to carry some copper. This right here is three eighths copper. We've got seven eighths copper, three quarter copper, half inch copper. Half inch we don't use a lot, but if you're running propane line, you, you might want to use that. Definitely need a vacuum pump. Definitely need a sawzall. These are just different tools you might need on your van. Definitely need a recovery machine. Uh, this right here is silicone, silicone gun. All right. Oh yeah, there, here's some stuff. Hold on. Bear with me, bear with me. Oh yeah, two things. Definitely need some PVC, okay? This is something you need to have. You need to have couplings, you need to have T's, you need to have 90's, you need to have a few traps, okay? If you don't know what a trap is for, definitely check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians, please. Now, let me show you a couple more things here that you definitely need. 
You definitely need some liquid tight, some conduit, and this right here is half inch. You got three quarter in there and one inch. Mostly you're gonna be dealing with half inch and three quarter, okay? If it's only residential. So you'll definitely need to know that. You need to carry that with you. What else? What else? Straps? You may need some straps. You may need to go underneath the house. You may need to strap some duct work up. If you have to do that, I'll show you. You can make your own straps or you can buy plumbing straps. This right here is straps we made ourselves, And this is a one inch and it's about four foot long, four or five foot long. Really nice the way we made it. So with this machine right here, see that right there? A little splitter, it's pretty awesome. You take and you put it where you want, it's on one inch, you slide your metal and it cuts it. It's pretty awesome, see that? Hope you learned something in today's video and I hope you have an idea of what parts you need and why. Uh, the, the bigger parts, like inducer motors or blower wheels or fan blades, you know, most indoor motors with modules, you're probably going to have to order some of these other parts. But the smaller parts that you could have on your, your vehicle with you can really save you a lot of time. So I hope this video was very informational for you. Definitely leave a comment below. Let me know if you learned anything. And if you just tell me who you are and where you're from, that's good information for me to have. Comment below. Let me know that as well. Thank you so much for watching. This has been HVAC Tips for Technicians. I am Tad, and I'll keep you educated, equipped, hopefully entertained. I'll give you some information if you let me. Thanks for watching.